Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Game Theory, the secret lore of Friday Night Funkin' by the Game Theorists. Now, I have not seen this, and personally, I, I don't know, I'm not really interested in Friday Night Funkin', I guess. I mean, it's, it's a good game. I'm not really that big of a fan. I think it's a solid game. I enjoy it. Uh, I just think that it's a little bit overrated, but I'm just, that's just my opinion. I, you know, that's just my opinion. And I feel like when it comes to the story, I can, I, I feel like I kind of already understand it. It's basically just a guy trying to get a girl and how he has to do it is rap battle against a, a ton of foes. For example, uh, the girl's dad, the girl's mom, I think uh, somebody's ex-boyfriend, I don't know. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I guess there's like, there is something with the lemon demon though. Uh, so I guess there's that. Yeah, there's that maybe, cause I think there might be a theory that he hired Pump and Skid. I don't know. Somebody hired Pump and Skid. Uh, and then, yeah, against a literal face demon. Uh, and then also just a tank man, which I... Yeah. I don't know. But, um, yeah, anyways, guys. Original links in the description. Subscribe to the Game Theory. Link in the description. Anyways, let's get right into it. Yo, Barapper the Rapper! Let's... All right, we're here looking at the lore. Oh God! Show me if you know the score. <laughs> Tell me what you know. Tell me what you know. I'm getting PO'd with that bee bippy bow. Your words are. Yeah, okay. We got a cringeworthy uh, beginning like song here. I'm serious. You're making me delirious. Forget you, boyfriend. I'm doing it myself. <laughs> Please Hello, enter the cringe. Welcome to I the already did. Theory, the only show that takes pride in shoving the word homogeneous into their rap lyrics. Friday Night Funkin' is as indie of an indie game as you can get. It was originally made as a prototype of a 48-hour game jam, but despite those humble beginnings, it's a game that now needs no introduction based on how popular it's become over the last few months. This would be the part of the video where I direct your attention to the in-progress Kickstarter helping to fund a full version of the game, which will include over 40 levels and 100 music tracks, but uh, due to the reality of video production this one won't be finished until after that kickstarter's over that said with the game currently on track to oh yeah dollars i don't think they really need our help in case you're out of the loop True. here's the quick rundown in friday night funkin you play as boyfriend whose one and only mission is to hook up with girlfriend and yes their names are confirmed to canonically be boyfriend and girlfriend anything else is just for the lols along the way your quest <laughs> for attaining love will be challenged by girlfriend's dad daddy dearest canonical along with her mom mommy mirest yes that too is confirmed along with all sorts of other rivals and antagonists. You win them over hey, via your skid. sick flow in a DDR-style rhythm game. Best of them all, and you're on your way to Friday Night Funkin', which is indeed a euphemism for exactly what it sounds like. The Game Over Fatality screen shows boyfriend succumbing to a case of his family jewels turning blue. But there's a lot more here than just trying to woo the girl. Friday Night Funkin' is a love letter to a bygone... Should I say bygone era of the internet? Yeah, I guess nah. so. Internet history <laughs> lesson here, people. Before there was YouTube, there was Newgrounds. And with it, the first home to some nice of the internet, 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 internet historian reference before by the before there line. was Aaron Hansen game grump there was Aaron Hansen ego raptor oh God. no one told me there were bombs there Hey, Snake, there are bombs there. Before there was Video Game Donkey, there was Meat Wad Sprite. Who's your dentist, Quack? Oh, yeah. Quintus. And Newgrounds was the place to find them. Newgrounds creator and CEO Tom Fulp created the site back in the 90s when he was still a teenager. First starting off as a digital version of a magazine he created when he was 13. Since the beginning, Newgrounds has, for better or worse, been the result of what you get when you take a bunch of bored teenagers with nothing but free time and an internet connection and give them total creative freedom. True. It was, and still is, in a lot of ways, the place you turn to to see games that were too raw, too random, and too violent for the mainstream. Parody videos of your favorite characters doing questionable things, and where you adjusted your age settings late into the night to see what was behind those big red A-rated videos. Remember, this was back in the 90s and early 2000s when most of us had never even heard of concepts like brand safety. And there was no worry of getting demonetized because, well, none of it was monetized in the first place. We were just making stuff to True. Make stuff. Friday Night 
right. Fun that's fun. very true. Gills with Newgrounds history and references. Yeah, of course that's all changed now. We'd be here for literal hours, and it'd be a different sort of channel. That said, if you are interested in a deep dive into Newgrounds history, go check out the channel Two Left Thumbs, who's already oh yeah hours of content documenting the numerous Easter eggs in throughout this game, alongside interviews with the original Flash creators of many of the series that it references. No, what I'm here to do is to dig into the lore of this game, because yes, there is lore beyond just blue-haired guy wants to get the girl. We know via <laughs> AMAs on Reddit. <laughs> As I said in the beginning. <laughs> that with regards to that, each week has a reason for existing, even the ones that don't have dialogue yet. So that's our quest. Well, yeah, the thing is, the game is going to get updated, too. So there's going to be more to this game after this video, too. So this video might become dated in a little while. Mommy and Daddy are attacking a mall Santa in week five? Or what the origin of the lemon demon is? Well, I think I'm on track to getting this whole thing figured out. Will it be speculative? Absolutely. Is it more hypothesis than actual theory? You betcha! Am I aware that the game devs have gone online to talk about some of this stuff in a way that directly contradicts some of what we're talking about today? Yes, and I don't care, because I think they're keeping secrets for the final game. Does it give me a chance to spend a week listening to this music on loop while I research the script? Undoubtedly. And that, my friends, is why we're here. So let's get one okay. thing right, right off the bat. The way the weeks are presented in I feel like he said that just to you know sure, avoid hate there to seven, but from a which is fine perspective this isn't an accurate timeline of events phantom arcade the game's story lead slash animator slash character creator confirmed this during a live stream week two is supposed to come after the mom meaning that the events of week two actually come after the events oh of yeah in other words we've got some untangled i heard about that the story doesn't start too confusing the first week week one is indeed the first week chronologically boyfriend battles daddy dearest who apparently doesn't take too kindly to the idea of his daughter getting funky on a Friday night. After he loses, Daddy Dearest is humiliated. And so he hires a mercenary to kill off boyfriend, because why not? Enter Pico, the main antagonist of week three. He's a merc who was hired by the dad to go f with the boyfriend after the boyfriend humiliated the dad by beating him in the first stage. Oh, he yeah. He doesn't know who he's being sent to kill until he gets there. And then he finds out that it's somebody he used to know. Someone he used to know. Yeah, who so. That be? Well, Pico is an old Newgrounds mainstay with his yeah. own series of games, including Pico School. Pico so City I think that is kind of confirming it. Operatives game to name a few, but in one of those games, Pico School Love Conquers All, released last month for April Fools, we get hints that Pico and boyfriend might have actually had. Yeah, okay. Story. This is my boyfriend. Everyone at school is totally cool with it. I'm not saying everything is perfect, but our planet is coming around. Now, obviously, this was an April Fools' project and most likely set in an alternate universe. So, can we really believe that boyfriend and Friday Night Funkin' might have a romantic backstory with Pico? Yeah. Actually, yeah, I knew he was just gonna yes. say yes. No yeah. Than the I mean, what else would there be? What else would he build up to there? Canonically exes. That is real. That's not mean. So if you played the level and assumed that Pico was a jealous ex, you were absolutely right. But maybe not in the way that you first expected. Yeah. I kind of like that. I think that's it out on the roof cool. Of a limo speeding down it's also kind of funny. An army of backup dancer henchmen. And if the limo didn't tip you off, girlfriend's family is loaded. We see it briefly in one of the earliest trailers for the game, but Daddy Dearest is a former rock star. And according to details shared on the game's Kickstarter, Mommy Mirest is a pop star in her own right. Hence the limo and all the dancers. It's also worth noting that those demonic backup dancers are apparently grown in bottles. A detail uh, that's gonna become very important. What? When we talk about the lore. The fact that they could be Okay, evidence, please. The final game, they'll likely die during one of the song transitions. In a now-deleted tweet, Phantom Arcade hinted at this surprise death. And looking at unused sprites hidden in the game, we see them ripped to pieces, with the first in the sequence showing them clearly getting hit in the gut by something. That oh! That thing is likely a low-hanging light pole, another unused sprite found in the game's files. Now this is where we're really gonna start filling in lore holes with puzzle pieces sourced from various developer comments. After his battle with mom, boyfriend's musical ability seemingly manages to gain him acceptance from the family. We know this based on a bit of lore that Dev Phantom Arcade dropped during a live stream. The boyfriend gets accepted by the family because week two is supposed to come after the mom. And yeah, while dad and mom might no longer consider boyfriend a target for murder, they're still willing to mess with him, which leads us to Halloween. When the boyfriend's accepted by the family, they sort of invite him over and, like, play cruel tricks on him. So they make him oh, so, like, so that's what... Pennsylvania house ...and pass out, like, candy with the girlfriend on Halloween, and the oh. spooky kids stop by. Hey! Kids, by the way, are Skid and Pump, characters yeah. from the Spooky Month video series, and originators of the spooky dance. However, not everything is as it seems. Turns out they were kind of being tricked by someone not so nice. Someone not so yeah, nice. the lemon the demon. With 
a lemon shaped head. And yes, it's merely lemon shaped and not actually a lemon, according to the devs in yet another deleted tweet. Regardless of what his head really is, though, he makes no secret of the fact that he intends to eat girlfriend. Yeah, man, I'm gonna eat your girlfriend. Pretty explicit stuff there, but. Oh, yeah, that's in the lyrics. Monster, or is something more going on here? And this is where we get back into heavy theory territory. Remember when I said that Mommy Mirist's backup dancers are born out of a bottle? That's why them getting murdered by a telephone pole hereditary style didn't matter a whole lot because they could just be regrown. It could tie in. But where's the evidence for that? Well, the appearance was saying that they're regrown. By the fan community using like, yeah, okay, okay it wouldn't matter, matter. But where's the evidence for the bottle stuff? Week five at Christmas in the level with Mall Santa. Just out of nowhere, randomly appears. It is a weird transition. Oh, yeah, it is weird. The only one like it in the game thus far. But in his song, Winter Horror Land, we get this lyric. There's no man smiling with your tears. Fallen angels, aka demons, created with your meat. It's another reference to things being grown or born unnaturally. Okay, I guess that's related to the backup dancers. Some, some of the way. evidence. Maybe a mistake created by Mommy Mirist and Daddy Dearest during their henchman testing. Because remember, the monster's goal here is to kill and eat girlfriend. I wouldn't be surprised if his only beef against boyfriend is just that he got in the way. Now that connection between Not only the that, he also has the same color skin as those like demon stretch. things. But consider this. Another unused asset from the game has the monster literally growing out of a pumpkin. Notice the misplaced eyes and the jaw. He's like goo. He's able to transform, grow out of things. Again, just like a henchman that would be grown out of a bottle. He also canonically has the demonic ability to alter someone's perception, which is their explanation for why the background in week five is able to change between songs two and three. Again, this was in a deleted tweet, which tells me that it's something that they might be trying to save for the final game. But just okay. think about for a second. He's able to transform himself and reality. Guess what? He's Santa. Yeah, isn't it a little weird that Daddy Dearest and Mommy Mirest are holding a mall Santa hostage? So that's a theory. Five? He's Santa. Super random, right? Well, I'm gonna predict that it's because Santa is really the monster in disguise. Or because we see a silhouette in the background of the mall, maybe one of the monster's warriors. Transformed, hiding, waiting to get his revenge. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I didn't even I notice him in the background. Gone online to say that Santa's dead. And that Santa is just Santa. But neither of those statements actually contradict anything about this theory. Another monster could very well be hiding inside that normal Santa, using his body as a sort of disguise. Because as we're about to see in week six, body swaps oh, into yeah. this universe and are 100% canon. And this prediction ties in with the following week as well. See, in a seemingly random twist, week six switches gears entirely and puts you into a PS1 style video game. The title of the week, Hating Simulator, an obvious play on Dating Simulator, features a battle against a handsome man named Senpai, who, after you defeat him twice, turns into a horrific floating spirit head. It's another one of those weird transitions. Yeah. So what is going on here? Well, it was confirmed via live stream that Senpai is a character from a video game that Girlfriend plays, and that the spirit is trapped inside of that video game character. But Senpai is still himself. Senpai is just a video game character that's inside the game she plays. There's a human soul that was like trapped inside that character. So, first and foremost, why are we suddenly in a video game? Well, the common belief online is that Daddy Dearest has the ability to trap human souls inside of video games, which would coincide with all the soul experiments that we've been talking about with both the henchman and the lemon monster. This would also coincide with what the spirit says during the cutscene where he breaks free. Quote, direct contact with real humans after being trapped in here for so long. And her of all people. I'll make her father pay for what he's done to me and all the oh, okay. you and make you take my place. You don't mind your bodies being borrowed, right? Wow, that is a lot to unpack there. So first, let's talk about that last line. You don't mind Mind your bodies being borrowed. This is now confirmed to be a world where soul swaps can happen and where people can walk around inside the bodies of others. This gives us more evidence to support my hypothesis that Santa is actually a monster in disguise, which is why mommy and daddy. Yeah, are that's really only a hypothesis. That could uh, also explain it's why a theory. <laughs> us a game the theory. Yeah. Isn't it weird that daddy would put boyfriend in here after he had already canonically won the family over in the previous weeks? Well, it could very possibly be because we doubted him. Seeing daddy. Daddy and mommy holding Santa at gunpoint, boyfriend tries to stop it only to give the monster a chance to transform. And because the monster escapes or whatever, daddy punishes us by putting us inside the video game. Okay, that's but a theory. One thing that goes unexplained with this interpretation. Why is girlfriend here? It seems odd that daddy would punish his daughter as well by sending her into the game. And maybe the daddy sends them both into a game thing has been confirmed via a tweet or something, but I haven't been able to find an original source to back it up. Which got me to ask, what if none of this is daddy's doing? 
Remember, the lemon monster can alter perception and reality. Maybe he's the one who's actually. Yeah, it's true. I guess. The line, I'll make her father. I feel like using deleted tweets as well is not really put everyone in incredible, game, but it's alright. Another way to read that line. It could just be referencing all the souls that Daddy's been experimenting on, which led to the creation of the lemon monster in the first place and resulted in Spirit getting trapped here. Because again, consider this: in his lines, the Spirit calls out direct contact with real humans, implying there's some difference between you being in the game, real humans able to retain your own bodies, and him being in the video game, a spirit who possesses a character. It also implies that he's the only one in here with no other real humans around, which kind of debunks the idea that daddy is sending the souls of failed boyfriends into the video game as punishment, which is a theory that we've seen kicking around on the internet, but this doesn't line up with what we're seeing in the game. Anyway, whether it was Lemon Demon or Daddy, you are trapped in a video game and only one thing can save you, the power of sick beats. So there you have it, <laughs> friends. A lot more seems to be brewing under the surface between shape-shifting monsters, soul experiments, and lots of people wanting revenge for the secret experiments that Daddy and Mommy have been doing. I know that I haven't talked about Tank Man in week 7 yet, but we're on page 5 of this script, and my Tank Man stuff is another 2 pages long, which would be unfair to the mm. editors, to be honest. So I am saying no to crunch time, and I am saying to you that hey, if you enjoyed this... Maybe oh, you guys, you know, maybe you should subscribe for part 2. Yeah, part 2. Friday Night Funkin'. Tell me to bebop go finish writing that next theory. And I know what you're thinking. Why in the world would I dedicate a side chunk of my life to unpacking the lore of a game with like five lines of dialogue in it you've probably assumed correctly it's because i can't sleep sometimes you just can't turn off oh, i was gonna say views i mean honestly this wasn't a terrible theory i think i think it, there isn't much information i feel like on friday night funkin when it comes to the lore and he's just getting what he can to try and make a theory like to try and piece together the lore and not only that again there is a ton more that's coming for this game. So I feel like, you know, there's not really much. And as I said before, I feel like this video might become dated, not in a little while, but definitely I feel like once this game has gotten more weeks, I feel like this theory, it could be proven, but it also could be dated and disproven. There are a lot of points here that I think are really good and could be true. But then again, there are also a lot of points here that I don't think are great. And, yeah, that's totally fine. I feel like this is one of those videos where he made the theory, and it's it's a theory. And it's a fine theory. Not only that, in the video, he said himself that this is mainly a theory. Like, this, it's main well, not a theory. This is mainly a hypothesis, really. It's, it's basically meaning that, like, this, not all of it is probably going to be right. And that just makes sense as well when you consider the game now, because it's just, you know, not... You know, there's not much about the game out yet, because there's still more coming. And, yeah, the fact that he's doing a part two, I guess that makes sense, but, yeah. <laughs> kind of made fun of him there, you know. I think I know why he's making a part two. Uh, but, uh, yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the like, the video, subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one. Bye!